Good morning. Welcome to worship, those of you here in person um, and those of you watching later online. A number of announcements to uh, start our, our worship this morning, or before we start our worship this morning. First of all, I want to offer, on behalf of the core, I'm sure you agree with me, uh, our congratulations to Major Kelvin Lang, who this week was uh, recognised as having completed 25 years of Salvation Army officership. So, congratulations, Kelvin. <laughs> Only another 25 to go. <laughs> a few announcements then. Uh, tomorrow is the uh, next Monday free time session uh, between 10 and 12. And uh, it's uh, open to all. Come along, have a game of table tennis, dominoes, be part of the uh, corporate effort to make the next jigsaw puzzle. Uh, and uh, just to have a good time. Free drinks, uh, tea and coffee available. And uh, it's open to all, so do come along if you'd like to, between 10 and 12 tomorrow. Uh, on the uh, foyer table, there are copies of the prayer diary for August, so please do take those as you leave this morning, if you haven't already done so. Uh, over the last week, we've had a school uniform pop-up shop here on Tuesdays and Thursdays, being run by Clothing Coventry, a local charity. And it's helped so far over 100 families this week, which is a really fantastic effort. If you personally need support getting uniform or have any old uniform that you can uh, donate, then please look at the notice board in the cafe area to find out more details, more information about that. The next Monday craft session will take place a week uh, tomorrow. That's Monday the 7th of August between 6.30 and 8 p.m. Uh, you're more than welcome to, to bring your own craft or else uh, come along and join in with something that's already been um, uh, provided here. For more details, please talk to either Haley or Glynis. Uh, we now have a, a blank tea and coffee rotor, so there are no names on it from today onwards. So if you can help with that, then please do so, uh, particularly over these next few weeks uh, when, as I say, there is, there's nobody signed up at the moment. Finally, just to, to, to tell you that the funeral service for David Clifford will take place here in the hall on Wednesday the 9th of August. That's a week on, on Wednesday. That's 2.30 here in the hall, the funeral service for, for David Clifford. And obviously we, we, we think of uh, Adrian and Rebecca, Jacob and Jasmine, and other members of the family, and we just offer them up to the Lord in, in prayer. I'm sure you'll do so faithfully in these coming days. Thank you for your attention. God bless you all. Good morning. I'm, I'm sort of getting used to Coventry. You don't get an expression on people in Birmingham. They don't, they don't you know, you get nothing coming, coming back. Uh, well, uh, well, yeah. Um, I'm struggling a little bit with the accents around here. They're a bit odd. I mean, it's all right for you. You're, you're just got a continuation of the same, haven't you? The same sort of Yorkshire accent. Although ours is a much more... Um, um, yeah, cultured, Jenny said, accents, <laughs> yes. I like the ring road, though. Once I realised that there were numbers on the junctions, things became much easier. Because you'd be driving and you think, am I on, am I off, am I on? I found the tip as well, which means we can actually move now in the house. We've got rid of some of the boxes. It's good to be in the Lord's house, wherever we are, isn't it? And wherever we are, we're sort of in the Lord's house as well, aren't we? Because we live in a state of uh, holiness, wherever we are, whatever we're doing. Jesus is never away from us. He's always there with us. He goes before us. He follows us. He's there in doing everything we're doing. We are such privileged people. How can it be? What it is about me that makes my God love me? I, I mean, I look in the mirror sometimes, apart from seeing my dad, but I look in the mirror and I think, why do you love me, God? What is it about me that you care about so much? And I struggle to find the answer. I just praise him that he does love me as he does, that he cares for me as he does. And I want to praise him. I want to sing a song about him. And we're going to do that just now. The band have introduced the tune to us. We're going to stand together and we'll sing these words through. You what?
I think it's getting harder and harder to watch the news, isn't it, without getting sort of depressed a little bit. It seems that we're in a cycle of bad news, a cycle of difficulties. Even the exceptionally good weather is a bad thing at the moment. We're all too hot in many parts of our world, and in our part of the world, too wet, it seems. But it's not just that, is it? It's the social things, sociological things that are going on in our world as well. We see things not as we'd like them to be, not as God intended them to be, certainly. When we look at our world, we see that Jesus is not the centre of much of it. That's the problem. We see difficulties in all sorts of areas. We're struggling in our health service. We're struggling in our education service. Our transport service is struggling. And although these things seem totally unrelated to the church, they are related to attitudes and problems that people tend to create for themselves when Jesus is not the centre of their living. I hope for each one of you sitting here today that Jesus is the centre within your life. That everything you do and everything you think about, everything that you want and wish for, all your ambitions, are centred around Jesus. We spoke last week about the importance of following the Holy Spirit in our in our lives, giving in to his guidance. And that remains true. It's not just for a week. It's true all the time. We need Jesus to be the centre of our lives. You think a little bit, just for a moment, about the previous week, the week you've just lived through, the things that have happened, the things you've done, the way you've responded to things, 
Think about the opportunities that came your way. How did you respond to them? Often, it's easier to remain quiet than to intervene. Sometimes it's harder to stay quiet rather than intervening. Having the wisdom to know which requires having Jesus at the centre of our lives. There's a great um, a proverb that we have from Solomon, and it says, uh, don't answer a fool according to his folly, or you'll become like him. Sometimes it's easy to get involved in an argument that's pointless, senseless, and self-defeating. But it also says in the very next verse, answer a fool according to his folly, or he will remain in his foolishness. So sometimes we do have to speak out. And that's where wisdom is important in our lives. Knowing when to speak out, when to stay silent. And that requires guidance. It requires the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Solomon is not contradicting himself in those two verses. He's pointing out that actually nothing is always the same. Sometimes our response has to be very different. Going back to the old and trusted ways is not always the best idea. Think of Jericho. Think of what happened at Jericho. To take that city, they marched around it and blew trumpets at it, and it fell down. That was never done again. That was the solution for that occasion, for that time, for that situation. Sometimes as people, we tend to feel we need to go back to what was worked before for us. It may be that that's a good idea, but a better idea is to listen to the Holy Spirit. The better idea is to keep Jesus at the very center of our lives. We're going to sing a song together just to remind us of these truths. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are very conscious that we need you to be at the centre of our lives. We are also aware that the world clamours to destroy that concentration on you. We're aware that there is so much that distracts us from your voice.
Heavenly Father, we ask that all those people in our world who are in positions of influence will be influenced by you. That you will move to the centre of their lives, of their thinking, of their philosophies, of their planning. We ask that we will see kindness more demonstrated in our world and hatred less demonstrated. Heavenly Father, we are aware of many situations of conflict. The ones that make the headlines and the ones that don't. The ones that go on in the background. And the smaller conflicts, Lord. We think of the situation in human trafficking at the moment. We pray for your blessing on those who seek to eradicate that terrible blight from our societies. We think of those countries where conflict is causing human suffering on a scale that we barely imagine. We've seen very profitable countries, affluent countries, destroyed by conflict. Heavenly Father, we need you to come to the center of this world. And we accept the responsibility that you've given us to take the message of the gospel to the world, to all the world. Help us to be productive and effective in our ministry. Help us to be confident in expressing our love for you. Help us to be faithful in obedience of you and confident in the resources which you enable us through. Heavenly Father, here in this place, help us to be a powerful and effective church. Help us be effective and powerful people. Developing relationships with those who do not know you. Helping to broadcast that relationship, to broadcast the power of your love and the tremendous impact that you can have on our lives. Heavenly Father, in every opportunity we receive, give us the courage to involve ourselves, to speak your name as it is in our hearts. We understand, Lord, that in able to, do, uh, to enable us to do this, we need to have that strong, powerful, meaningful relationship with you. For each one of us, Lord, renew again your identity imprinted in our living, impressed on our hearts, and inevitably seen as a consequence of that love in our living. Heavenly Father, as the meeting progresses, may we each receive a stronger image of you, a better understanding of you, and a greater experience of your love for each one of us. Heavenly Father, we uh, ask all these things in your name. Amen. We're going to share a Bible reading together. The Bible reading is taken from Acts chapter 8, verses 4 to 13. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Christ there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the miraculous signs he did, they all paid close attention to what he said. With shrieks, evil spirits out came out of many, and many paralytics and cripples were healed. So there was great joy in that city. Now for some time, a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people in Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great, and all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention and exclaimed, This man is a divine power, known as a great power. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his magic. 
But when they believed Philip, as he preached the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptised, both men and women. Simon himself believed and was baptised, and he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. We're going to be thinking about that scripture reading a little bit later, but um, as I've been reading it over these last couple of weeks, it's become really exciting. I hope when we turn to the Bible, do we feel excited when we read it? Do we gain something from it that helps us? Well, we're going to think about that a little bit later, but I hope so. I hope we get excited by what we read and what we can learn because we're all on this journey together, aren't we? We're all on this journey together. Well, we're going to sing a song now. It's on a video and it's called, well, I call it a little bit of heaven in my life. I'm hoping that it's going to be there. So we'll, um, we'll probably need to stand for this one because it's a little bit where we can move about if you so desire. No pressure. You're ready. Catherine's ready. Ray, let's go then. <laughs>
exhausted now, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> that was great. Because we want to sing God's praise forever, don't we? We want to share the joy that we have of knowing Jesus with other people. Well, young people, right, I need some help. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. You will pay for that later. <laughs> right then, who's going to help me? I've got a five pound note here. <gasps> Do you see many of these? No. Oh. Oh, bless. Right. What can you tell me about this? What would happen if you went into a shop? And you wanted some sweets, and you gave that five pound note. What would happen? Uh, uh, it would count as like five pounds, and then if there's any change, it'll just give you like coins back. Brilliant answer. Very, very good. <gasps> what do you think? Do you think that you'd be able to buy some sweeties if you took this five pound into the shop? Yeah. That's good then, isn't it? Lots of sweeties or not many? Lots and lots and lots, do you think? Yeah, because uh, you'd be able to have lots of sweeties with that, wouldn't you? Do you think? Maybe. Right, well, on here, it says... Can you see that writing there? It's very, very small, isn't it? But it's a promise... Oh, shall I read that promise or shall we read it together? together? Together. Right, here we go. Can you see that? Yeah. I promise to pay the bearer the, on, the, the, on, on demand the sum of five pounds. Well done. That's really small on there, isn't it? So, we take it into the shop. And we buy what we need to buy, we get our change, and then we go on our way. But what happens if this wasn't real? <gasps> what? It wouldn't, just count, it wouldn't count as money. Oh, it wouldn't count as money, would it? It would be fake, wouldn't it? Yeah, and that's no good, is it? No, wow. So, just as it's five pounds... You've seen yourself on the screen, haven't you? <laughs> Brilliant. Hello, you coming to join us? No, okay. Um, so this is real. This is not what we call counterfeit or fake. It is real because it's got some marks on it which says that it's real. So it's got some stamps on it. It's got a line through it. And they're very hard to count these now, aren't they? Because they're sort of a plasticky thing, aren't they? Yes. yes. <laughs> You're nodding, Maureen, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, very difficult to count. But just like this five pound, we as Christians, and you love Jesus, don't you? Yeah. Great stuff. So just as Christians, we have to be what we call authentic. Now, that's a really big word, isn't it? Authentic. But we have to be real. We have to uh, be the person that God wants us to be. And that's really important because we don't want to be one thing one day, maybe on a Sunday when we come to church, and then a different person in the week because people will get confused about who we are. So remember that, that we need to be good people for Jesus. Okay. Now, if I was really generous, I'd give you this, wouldn't I? Yeah, but I'm not, so. <laughs> That's really horrible, but if you come and see me afterwards, we may have some sweeties for you. All right. Okay, so see me afterwards. I'm not as nasty as that sounded, honestly. All right. Okay, then. Thank you. Give him a round of applause. And now, please, we'd like to receive the offering. Thank you.
Let's pray together. Father, for these offerings that we've given to you just now, that you'll bless it so that other people will be able to come into a knowledge of you as their saviour. I just pray, Lord, that as we get involved in mission, that you will give us the resources that we need. But, Father, help us to do our part too. So bless this monetary offering, I pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Catherine and Ban. That was beautiful, wasn't it? The words that we associate with that music, I know he cares for me. And that's individual, isn't it? That's individual, he cares for me. Well, we're going to uh, learn a, a chorus um, just now. Uh, hopefully, you have um, a little piece of paper which looks a little bit like that. And uh, it's, a, it's a lovely chorus, and uh, 
I'm going to ask Steve if he would just to play it through for us. And um, the words there are on the screen. And uh, we'll sing, we'll listen first, and then the second time we'll sing it. Thank you. It's got a little bit of a lilt to it, hasn't it, as we sing it together. So, do you like it? Do you like the melody? Yeah? yeah? Good. Okay. Are we having an introduction? Thank you. We'll sing together. Thank you. And now we're going to listen, please, to the ministry of the songsters.
Thank you very much, Songsters. That was beautiful, wasn't it? And the words, someone prayed, somebody prayed for me. Let's never, ever underestimate the power of prayer because uh, prayer can move mountains. And uh, that's so good to know that we're in being prayed for. Let's pray together. Father, we just thank you for this worship time together. And now, Lord, as we look at your word, I just pray, Lord, that you will speak to us, that you will challenge us, that you will encourage us in the way that you want us to go. So be with us, I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm sure that we all like to feel comfortable, do we? Do we have something at home that we go to to make us feel comfortable? Well, I do, and I've brought them to show you. Right, now these, has anyone got some of these? Some slippers, these are really lovely and warm. You know, when, when the weather's a bit rubbish. But you know you can put these in the microwave. That's disgusting, isn't it, really? <laughs> you can put them in the microwave and they warm up. And then you put your feet in them and then it keeps them really, really warm. But I've never had the opportunity that I thought that was right to put them in the microwave. So they don't go in the microwave, but that's just a thought. Right, now this, this is something. If you look at this, how old would you think it is? Don't be shy. Who said 20 years? Oh, you're not far off. This, this is 23 years old, and I can't part with it because it's my go-to. So when I get in at night, not always, not in the summer, <laughs> but when I get in at night and the day's done, I go and get some joggy bottoms on, some tracksuit bottoms, and then I put this on as well. And it, it's like a security blanket. I don't know if you've got anything resembling that. Um, okay, probably not. <laughs> right, and last, but I bet this is something that you can relate to. Yeah. Chocolate. <laughs> yeah, I love all kinds of chocolate. And this is, it says, mini rolls raspberry. I buy these because Steve doesn't like them. <laughs> It says mini, but mighty. So that's good, isn't it? And it's Cadbury's. I love Cadbury's chocolate. So all these things are go-to things, aren't they? When we want to feel comfortable, it makes us feel good. And I'm sure there's lots of other things that you could um, be party to. But it's really important, isn't it, that we feel comfortable? Or is it? Now then, has anybody had a boost bar? Yeah, they're great, aren't they? That's my favourite chocolate bar. Because it does exactly what it says. It gives us a boost. Now, I only eat a boost when I'm on holiday. 
Now, you know officers get lots of holidays. No, I'm joking. We, um, so when I, we're on holiday, I do treat myself to a boost bar. But you know, there's lots of things that can help us feel comfortable. And uh, that's really important for our own well-being, isn't it? That we take time out to look after ourselves. Because if we don't look after ourselves physically, how can we look after ourselves spiritually? And that's really important. So for a few moments just now, we're going to think about that Bible reading, which Anne-Marie brought to us there from the book of Acts. And it all links into what we were thinking about last week when Philip went uh, and did what he needed to do because God called him to, to go and to do what God wanted him to do. So these few verses show about the persecution of the church and uh, the apostles were just sent and they went and um, they actually fulfilled the prophecy which Jesus had said back in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, when it says, when you receive the power of the Holy Spirit, when it comes on you and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What an amazing thing to happen when the Holy Spirit works in people's lives and they go and they spread that message of salvation. So even through difficult times, even through persecution, God was there. And through that persecution, people became saved. Through that persecution, people left their homes and they took the gospel message with them. Now, we may not want to become spiritually uncomfortable, but the discomfort may be needed for us to move on. This is an amazing fellowship. It really is. And we're just a couple of weeks in. And that is amazing and we need to nurture that and we need to look after it because that is so important but if we're going to move on from where we are now then we might need to feel a little bit uncomfortable spiritually because through that being uncomfortable God may be preparing us for something really special now, that's exciting, isn't it? I hope you do feel that that is exciting. In that scripture reading, Peter and John were sent to Samaria to see if the Samaritans who were becoming converted were really authentic and they were really true believers. So here, Peter and John were the believers who went out to support others so that the gospel message could continue. And that's important too, isn't it? When we read in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, it records how Jesus was born, how he came to live his life here on earth, and then how he died too. And his death was for each one of us. And the Gospels teach us how to live our lives. The way we live our lives comes from the books of Acts. Because there, if we study the book of Acts, we learn about conversion. We learn about how the Gospel message can be taken out into different communities. And it teaches us about the promise of salvation. Again, we learn about the challenges the apostles faced, but how God blessed them, even through the difficulties. They become spiritually uncomfortable. And through this, many people came to faith. It's really interesting, isn't it? When we think about coming to faith. Or even when God is talking to us and speaking to us, 
Because do we get that feeling of uneasiness in our spirit when God is saying, I want something of you to do my work here on earth? And then we feel uncomfortable when we just know that we have to say yes. And that's sometimes really scary. But for God's mission to grow, that needs to happen. I wonder, are you a morning person or an evening person? Uh, do you get up with the larks? No? Yes, we've got one, yeah? Who's a night person? No? Nobody a night per- Oh, a night person. Gemma's a night person. Right, okay. We've got one or two, haven't we? Well, I like to get up really early in the morning. When I say really early, half past six, it's not that early, is it, really? I do like to do that, but very often I fail. But I would say that I am a morning person. And I wonder, what do we do the first thing do we, when we get up? Do we thank God for the day ahead, not knowing what it's going to bring? Do we give to him maybe the things that are on our minds that we need to talk to him about? So do we surrender the day to God with all its challenges, all its joys, the people we may meet, the people who we plan to meet, and it doesn't happen for whatever reason? Well, William Booth said, the greatest of a man's power is the measure of his or her surrender to God. The greatest of a man's power is the measure of his surrender to God. That's interesting, isn't it? When the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, we can be challenged to do all kinds of different things. So going back to that Bible reading, we heard about Simon who was a bit of a, a one, really. That's a Yorkshire expression, if you're not sure. He was a bit um, different. He was a bit sort of not for Christianity. And he was a sorcerer. So when we think of sorcerer, that's quite an old-fashioned word, isn't it? But it's about magic and doing things. And, you know, loads of people paid attention to him and many people followed him because of his magic but you know when we think about Philip now Philip was out and about speaking to the people too and when they heard Philip they thought well wait a minute he's got something really interesting to say And through what Philip was saying, more women and children and men were converted. And they surrendered their lives to God. And as we know from last week, Philip was doing tremendously well. And yet God God called him away from what he was doing. But before he left, Simon, the sorcerer, Receive salvation. And that was quite amazing. Because sometimes we can be deterred, can't we? About doing what God wants us to do. We can become deterred if we don't think we know much about the Bible. If we don't understand the gospel. But my encouraging thoughts this morning would be then, if we don't know something then we can either find out or we can ask someone else because we are a family of believers here. And if we don't know, then there will be someone who does. And this is why it's so important for us to read our Bibles, to share in Bible studies and to share in prayer together. What amazing thing is that somebody prayed for me. It's amazing, isn't it? And the difference that it can make. 
Well, we know that the Holy Spirit can stir us up. Now, Philip preached to the many, and he was quite a young person, really. But also, he preached to the one with the Ethiopian eunuch. You know, we want to know what's happening in your lives. We want to know what God is doing in your life. We want to hear about your thoughts and ideas in moving forward in God's mission. So is God speaking to you today or asking you to do something? Then please share it with someone. Jesus went through Samaria and saw the success of Philip. And for whatever reason, at this point, God speaks to Philip and asks him to go to the desert road to speak to that one person. God blessed the ministry of Philip. He blessed the ministry of the apostles too. And there were seasons of remarkable progress where God moved within the people. And there was a real sense of the Holy Spirit's guiding. The gospel exploded and Philip was in the center doing a brilliant job. But he went away to do what God asked him to do, to speak to the one. And by speaking to that one person, Christianity, the ripple effect, was amazing. The, apostle, the apostles, through difficult times, did what God wanted them to do. Through the persecution, they took the message and it was scattered everywhere. When we think of uh, Coventry City... It's big, isn't it? It's massive. And we can have the ripple effect of spreading the gospel message. Let's think then about the things we can do to help build the kingdom here on earth and not the things that we can't do. There's things that I can't do. And sometimes it's easy to dwell on that, isn't it? Then think about the things that we can do. But God honours our faithfulness. And we want to see our church here continue to grow, don't we? And we have that opportunity of being part of the journey. So let's listen to the Holy Spirit. I hope we surrender to God each day. I hope that we want to know Jesus more so that we can go deeper into relationship with him so that we can understand him more. I know he cares for me. I'll trust my Father in heaven for I know he cares for me. We're going to have a few moments when we can just reflect and relax totally in the spirit this morning. And we're going to sing that chorus again, I know you're there. Because we do know that when we call on the name of Jesus, he is there. Many battles have been won in the name of Jesus. So don't let's be content spiritually or spiritually comfortable, but let us be aware of the ideas that God will put into our hearts and minds. There are so many people who don't know Jesus. So let's join in his mission and work for him but be encouraged that you are loved by Almighty God. If the Holy Spirit is speaking to you this morning, then as we sing this song through, please feel free to use this place of prayer. Last week, 
JP, the divisional commander, said, let's use this place of prayer where we can come in a very special way and meet with God. We can meet with God just where we are too. But don't let's neglect this moment. Let's just relax as we sing this chorus together. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you give to us each day. Help us, Lord, to know you more. Help us, Lord, to be energized by your Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, in everything that we do for you. Help us, Lord, to realize that you love us so very much and care for us and that we can trust you in everything. Father, I just thank you for this morning's worship. Help us, Lord, as we live out our lives this coming week, the people who we will have conversations with. I just pray, Lord, that you will be in the centre of everything that we do. And I pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to sing a, a final song together. I've been changed. I'm sure that we, uh, we know this one, and the band are going to uh, accompany us. Would you like to stand as we uh, sing? Or if you feel more comfortable, remain seated. That's absolutely fine. But we'll sing this song through together. Thank you, Gemma. <laughs>
benediction prayer together. May the God who works wonders own among his people and by his power redeem them. May he be your joy and delight in you always. Amen. Amen. May God bless you.